Hello everyone and welcome to another Crafternoon box tutorial. Um, today is Sunday, it's the second weekend of April, so we're going to be working on the April uh, box, which uh, today's project is going to be mosaic die piecing. Um, so my name is Tanji, if you haven't met me before, it's great to have you joining us. I'm just going to check in quickly on the Facebook and YouTube feeds and make sure that everything's running as smoothly. Uh, YouTube, I can see Tony Bensley's there. Hello, Tony. Hello, crafty friends. We meet again. Excited to see how this mosaic die piecing comes together. I'm excited as well. So that's great to have you with us there, Tony. I'm going to jump into our little Facebook side of things. I think I can see where the comments are today. We had a little bit of trouble with that yesterday, but never mind. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, everything looks like it is running fairly smoothly, so I might uh, get started and at least we'll start to go through what is, uh, what's on the table today, because uh, there's a fair bit of bits and pieces on the table today. Let me just get my overhead camera doing its thing, show you what I've got there. So there's a lot on the table today. <laughs> so today we are going to be working on something along the lines of this little card um, using the wonderful mosaic um, and floral mosaic die and stamps from Couture Creations. So they're going to be used today um, to get this little mosaic piecing um, part together. So that's a nice little panel on there. Um, and then just using some of our Paper Rose um, Textures 1.0 patent paper. Um, and I've got a bunch of our Kaiser Craft um, cardstock ready to go. So I've pre-cut some of the bits today just because it'll make it a bit easier um, and perhaps not quite as long a video. Um, so I've got uh, Kaiser Craft Smooth White and Smooth Craft cardstock. Uh, I've got the Weave cardstock in Oatmeal and Biscuit. And we've got the Kaiser Craft, uh, sorry, Couture Creations Photographic Black Smooth cardstock as well. I've got my Gina K Designs inks, I've got Craft and I've got the Amalgam Obsidian ink there. We have got uh, the Paper Raffia that came in your kit. So there's white, there's a Craft and a black colour there. Uh, I've got the Paper Rose Sentiment Strips. I have got some Couture Creations double-sided tape and double-sided foam tape. Uh, and I've got my tools at the ready. So today I'm going to be using... Uh, liquid glue as well as I've got my little fine tip, whoops, put it on screen, Tangy, um, fine tip bottle. So we're going to need that to get into all these tiny little pieces that we've got in here. I've got my scissors, I've got some 3D pearls, liquid drops uh, in cotton ball colour. That's just for some embellishment later on. I've got tweezers. These little guys are going to save your life today and your sanity. Um, and I've got my little piecing pokey tool. Um, so this one's a Stampin' Up! brand one that I've had for ever and a day, but you can get other ones. So once you take the cap off, you've just got a nice little sharp pointy uh, thing there that's going to help you get into all the little pieces. You're also going to need um, a paper trimmer, a scoreboard or a bone folder and ruler. Um, you're going to need um, a die cutting machine, like a Big Shot or a Gemini, whatever you've got at home. If you don't have a, um, a die cutting machine, then you might be able to use a rolling pin and a soft board underneath um, and, uh, and roll over the top of the dies that way. Not particularly recommended, but it's uh, in a pinch you can get onto it. So I'm just going to clean up some of my workspace for you just so that we can get into having a look at what we're what we're actually doing. There's so much stuff on here today. I'm going to pop sentiments right away because they're things that we're going to use a little bit later. Now I've pre-cut, oh, I've also got an envelope in here. So I've got one of the, uh, the craft envelopes. So that's the Gina K Designs craft envelope for an A2 sized American card. I've already pre-cut and scored my cardstock for my card base today. So if you're wanting to double check the measurements, this is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches and then scored at four and a half. So that's eight and a half, five and a half and four and a half there. I'm just going to flip that over, find the raised side of the score and just fold this card in half, ready to go. Get my bone folder out and just give that a little bit of a bit of a burnish there. So that one is ready to go. Now I need to choose from one of these gorgeous papers as to what I'm going to put in as my background paper for today. So I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm going to 
I'm going to overlay that section there. It's going to be the same biscuit colour um, so that it all kind of ties in and matches. So I just kind of need to flip through a few of these and find, oh, that could be nice. I like that one. Which one's going to kind of work for what I'm trying to do today? Maybe not that one. This one's a bit dark. Could still be quite nice. A um, little bit of hessian white colour. Or a, oh, that's got quite a blue tone to it, I think. I think I'm going to go with this one. Pop all those other ones out of the way. Clean up my desk a little bit neater today. So first of all, what I'm going to do, and I've, I've pre-cut this one already just because it is a little bit of a, it's a long-winded piece today. Lots of bits and pieces to do. Um, so I'm going to cut, uh, I've pre-cut this, which is my panel for the top, and you're going to need to cut two of these. So this measures two and one eighth wide by five and one eighth tall. So just in case you didn't get that one first time, two and one eighth wide by five and one eighth tall. And you're going to cut two of those. And the reason you're going to cut two is that once you've cut out all these little pieces underneath, and I'm this one I pieced all of these pieces in today, um, but I'm actually going to do a little bit of a cheat for you, particularly for these little sesame seed shaped sized um, pieces down under here. Um, I don't want you all to go too crazy and mental like I did earlier. So I'm going to actually cut a second piece and this is going to be the colour that will shine through um, in those little sesame seed pieces. Um, and I'm going to also colour with all three of the other colours. So I'm going to mosaic this quite heavily today so it won't just be the one colour. So once I've got my two pieces, these will be able to sit on top of each other. The black piece will be the bottom one and of course once we glue the um, die cut pieces on top you'll be able to see the black come through and then I'm going to die cut these pieces as well um, and I've already done that so I've got all my little spare pieces. <laughs> we can see the fun we're having already. Um, I've got those in um, a container ready to go. So popping those bits aside for the moment and my keyboard because I don't need that in front of me. I'm going to grab my Big Shot machine. Hopefully you can see a little bit of this on the screen today. Wind everything back a little. And I'm just going to pop my biscuit coloured cardstock on here. Now if you're one of those people who can't keep it straight, um, and would like a little bit of extra support when you put your sandwich through your machine, you can use a little bit of washi tape. Um, I'm going to wing it, but I've just kind of tried to leave a bit of a, an even amount of border around the top and the two sides of that die. And I'm going to cut one on one end and one on the opposite end. <laughs> and then it moves um, of my cardstock. Probably should use washi tape because you know what happens when it's on camera. Everything goes pear shaped doesn't do it in normal life but <laughs> as soon as there's a camera on off it goes all right so just pop that one through now I'm just going to get my little pokey tool and just pop out any of these little pieces that have stuck as well as gosh I can't do this very well on camera today um, all these little pieces that have they're cut properly, they just haven't poked out um, when, the, uh, when the card's been lifted. And then because I've got a nice square edge on my die, I'm actually going to use that just to scrape these little pieces all off my plate. Um, and if you are cutting the, the second, third and fourth versions of this off your other colours of cardstock, um, you can just use that to help you just slice it off into a, or slide it off into a, um, a little container so that you can keep those pieces all together. So then I'm just going to turn my cardstock around and I'm going to do another die cut on the opposite end of that piece of cardstock. Now that was two and one eighth of an inch by five and one eighth of an inch. Right. Line that through and back. Go 
pokey tool. See these little pieces that have gotten stuck in here? Got these nice little helpful holes on the back to just pokey pokey through. If you don't have that, um, a pokey tool, you might have a, um, a toothpick or a wooden skewer or a, um, you know, even a, a needle, a sewing needle or something like that would be okay. At a pinch, you could use, you know, just a sharpish pencil. Um, that kind of thing would work. So then once you've cut that, you should have this kind of panel where you've got a bit in the middle for your sentiment to go across. Of course, if you wanted to move the placement of your sentiment, you can absolutely die cut these in different areas if you wish. You might only want one die cut and then you might want to put um, your sentiment below that. So up to you how you would like that to be laid out. I've got all these little pieces going around everywhere. So again, I'm just going to use my die to just scrape can't always do this with your die. You could use a metal ruler or something like that just to scrape them off. They do get stuck in all these little indentations. I'm just popping those off into a little container off camera to use later. So then once I've got that panel cut, which is going to be the, the front of my card, I've gone ahead and I've already pre-cut these ones. So I've just gone with three extra colours. So the smooth white, uh, the oatmeal colour and the smooth craft card stock. I'm going to pop those aside and pop my Big Shot aside because, as I said, I've pre-cut those for you. But I'll leave you oops, come out. I'll leave you all to keep cutting, keep die cutting, while I just quickly check in on my friends on Facebook. How are we today, Facebook friends? Margaret's here. Hello, Margaret. Tony's doing <laughs> Tony's doing YouTube and Facebook today. How many devices do you have running at a time, Tony? Going well? <laughs> oh dear. All going good in Canada. Excellent. Good to hear. Margaret, has your April box arrived? I'm keen to know that that has arrived. Okay. Where are we going? Let's pop that up so I can see what's happening. Okay, so to start this all off, I'm going to take whichever colour you've chosen as your backing card. I'm going to take these two pieces, the backing card and the nice die cut front one, and I'm going to glue them together. So this is where you can see all these tiny little intricate bits and bobs that we've got going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. I'm going to just go along and put just a little bit of liquid glue on the back in some fairly strategic places. You want your edges, uh, obviously, to be to be firmly stuck down. But then we do want a few bits in the middle of each die cut, just so that we've got anyway, something to uh, to hold everything down. So I'm just going to go. There's some fairly big sections here. That I can quite easily dab some glue on and then some little sections in here between these ones which aren't too terrible. There's not a lot that we can do and then I'm just going to pop some around this little star shape in the middle. Quickly do the bits oops, nearly missed on the other side. If you've chosen just to do one die cut a little bit more central, then you'll probably save yourself a little bit of sanity on this project today because two of these gets quite hectic. And I'm just going to put some glue across the middle here just to hold that panel down where it belongs. So as usual, the uh, hi Vanessa, the um, liquid glue just allows us to be able to put it down and then wiggle it into place so that it's nicely Nicely covering the bottom piece. We haven't got any awkward bits sticking out. Vanessa, that's okay that you missed the start, Dal. You can go back and um, watch the start when, we, uh, when we're when we finished. You can watch the replay on YouTube. Tony's partner's an IT whiz, so you can guess how my craft room is set up. Ah, oh, Tony, it's going to be a dream. Just wait until, um, wait until I get my new craft room in a few weeks. <laughs> I have to... Oh, okay, so it's landed in Canada, but it's not there with you yet. Oh, gosh. Well, fingers crossed it's there for you by next weekend, Margaret. 
should be, uh, it should get there. All right, here comes the fun part, folks. <laughs> and I can hear some of you cursing me already. Um, all right, so in all of these little bits and bobs, you're going to find, um, you know, you've got your star shape. You've got these little long diamondy type shapes. You've got these little, I don't know what shape they are. All I can say is don't try and do these little cestuses. They are a pain in the backside. Um, and they literally, when I was doing them before, this one literally is the size and shape of <laughs> a sesame seed. So that's what I was cursing. I was cursing the sesame seeds. Too much fun. So there's lots of different pieces, but I would start with, I mean, get a, get a feel for it. Start in the middle and work your way out is my kind of thought pattern. Um, so I'm going to start on my top one. Just pop a bit of glue in there. And I'm going to take my little star shape. It's good to start with the biggest ones. You know what you're kind of getting in for. Pop it into the little slot. Pop, push it down a little bit. You might get a little bit of glue that starts to seep out the sides. Um, but, um, you know, it should be okay. I'm going to match the top and the bottom patterns for this one. I'm going to start to use my tweezers to help place these because it is fiddly little work. Okay, the sesame seeds I'm going to leave as black just to save our sanity, as I said. Um, now I'm probably going to go with the oatmeal for these shapes. So I'm just going to try and dig a bunch of those out. Now there is a little tip I'll tell you if you are going to do them exactly the same. Um, you might want to cut three die cuts instead of two. Always cut one extra than the number of um, cuts that you're using. And that means that if you do happen to flick a couple of pieces off the off the workbench, off your craft table, um, onto the floor and you have to go hunting, um, it, it kind of just saves you a little bit of work because you've got some extra ones. Yeah, Tony, it is fiddly, but I guarantee you the, the effort is worth it. And it's something that you can put, it's a little bit meditative after a while. If you pop some music on or put a put a podcast on, put a YouTube video on in the background, um, you actually quite you get into it and um, it's, it's plenty of fun. I don't know if the recipient of your cut, you probably want to give this to someone who you know is going to understand and appreciate the amount of work that went on um, in making this particular card. Otherwise, you'll just probably feel a little bit hard done by. <laughs> but again, you may you may want to try this with a different die, a bigger die. Um, essentially, the process is just the same. I just really, once I saw this mosaic um, die and stamp set, I just went, ugh, I know exactly what I'm doing with that. Fiddly, but worth it. So I'm just using my tweezers to just dig out. Uh, was that another one? No, maybe not. All of these shapes. Hopefully I've got them all. If not, I'm going to have to get back in there. Mini mum. <laughs> oh, my nieces are doing that to, to, well, my oldest niece is doing that to us, Tony, at the moment. She's huge. She's, she bypassed grandma ages ago and uh, now she's taller than myself and she's heading for mum and dad. So <laughs> they don't have don't have long to go and she will be tall as tall. Now I'll give you the hot tip with these these little diamond desk type shapes is that they do have a slightly longer pointy end and a shorter stubbier end and the longer point goes into the middle. But essentially we're just going to use some tweezers. I normally grab the outer end just makes it easier to lay it in there and then just give it a little give it a little push down you probably only want to put three or four bits of glue down at the same time um, just because you don't want your glue to dry up while you're mucking around with these little fiddly bits um, and also you know things happen when we're crafting you know you might need to pop off to the toilet or the phone rings um, someone knocks on your door somebody starts burning the house down while they're cooking toast and you know you need to go and wrangle the kids so don't get too far ahead of yourself. Whoops. 
this is going to take a little while. Vanessa, your baby brother is six foot eight and some of his sons are taller. Holy wow, that's huge. And I bet they all get asked all the time, do you play basketball? Because you should play basketball because you're really tall. <laughs> yeah, what are you feeding them? It's insane. Super. <laughs> Tony says it does seem like fun. <laughs> Love the effort. Yeah, this is a card that you definitely, definitely want to have a bit of time up your sleeve to do. But it's almost like doing, you know, like the adult colouring books or, you know, doing the Zentangle drawings that are kind of meditation while you're while you're working um, or you've got um, doing yeah, just all those little kind of drawing coloring sort of concentrating but because it's so repetitive you can just kind of get into it and it's a bit mindless <laughs> can't type today this card is great mindfulness yes Vanessa that's the word I'm looking for I'm not very good at doing mindfulness stuff um, I tend to get halfway through a coloring in book or halfway through a page of a coloring in book and then I lose a bit of interest and I never come back to it. <laughs> when I come back to it eventually I start on a different page. <laughs> Whoops. Not a good thing. So you can see how as we're building this up it is getting so it's looking good. Do say so myself. Let's check in on my Facebook friends. What's happening over there, guys? <laughs> you need the pep talk as you're working. Oh dear. Yeah, lots of little bits to get very OCD about. It's um <laughs> sorry guys. You know I like to do one project a month that really challenges your patience. <laughs> this is it. This is kind of like rolling the paper flowers in February. It's uh, mm, it's the one that you'll all curse me for. But hey, we've got to step outside of our comfort zones every now and again. Try something new. Look, even if you only ever do one of these, it's um, you know, you can always say you've done it. It's like eating vegetables that you don't like. Celery. I'm looking at you. I hate celery with a passion. What kind of vegetable is celery? It's like it's eating water. Although I like watermelon, so, you know. I don't understand celery. It's just got a disgusting flavour. There we go. All right, we're working our way around. Getting my squeezy glue to squeeze. So you know what, I should start slowing down on this because after I finish today, my boyfriend and I have to go out and do some yard work to start getting this rental house that we're in back under control. Oh, there's a little sneaky one that's gotten in there that doesn't belong. It's like that little song that they used to sing on, is it Sesame Street, the play school? One of these things just doesn't belong. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other one. I don't know how I remember things like that from, you know, 35 odd years ago, but I don't remember what I did last week. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is, Vanessa? Celery takes more calories to eat than it does, than it gives you. I mean, look, to be fair, I need a diet like that, but why can't it be, you know, deep fried hot potato chips that does that why does it have to be something that tastes so revolting guys I think I've done it to myself already I found bits that I oh no there's one all right what have we got one two three four one more mm, there's another one in here somewhere there it is got it found it don't panic What is the most disgusting food? What is the food that you just can't, you can't do? For me, it's celery and tuna. 
I, I don't know what it is about tuna. Well, I do know what it is about tuna, but it's like it smells like cat food. And I just can't get over the smell of it in order to eat it. So celery's got a yucky, tasty thing. I guess it's kind of a bit like the people that can't eat coriander because it tastes like soap, except I can. But I, yeah, just celery just will nap. Not fun. Not fun at all. And like I can find, oh, look, my, I think my mum's put it in. She's not on today, so I can say this. I reckon she's she's put it in food that I've eaten before. I often like to say that I can most of the time identify and pick out the celery. Um, but I know for ages they were laughing at me behind my back. Well, they thought they were laughing at me behind my back because I would eat spring rolls and chico rolls. And often chico rolls have got um, celery in it. It's mostly hidden though, so I can kind of I can kind of come at that. Um, but I think they thought they were pretty funny because it was like, ah, Tanji's eating chicken rolls and they've got they've got celery in it, and she keeps saying how she hates celery so much, but she'll eat chicken rolls till the cows come home. I'm like, yeah, I know that it's in there though, but it's it's so well hidden with all the other flavors that unless I get a massive big chunk of it, I can generally cope. Um, but if it's like big chunks in vegetable soup, nah, not my kind of thing. I'll pick it out and I'll eat around it. <laughs> um, and I always have to ask like before I order like a salad from a restaurant or something. I don't know why, but people think celery belongs in salad. Here to tell you it does not. Revolting. What have we got? Raw oyster. Yeah, Vanessa, raw oysters, no, but I'll do I'll I'll do oysters Kilpatrick with the bacon and the and the sauce in it. The sort of not soy sauce. What's the sauce that they put in there? I'll do that. Is it barbecue sauce in oysters Kilpatrick? Green beans. Tony, no green beans. Oh. See yeah, if you put a bunch of you know big knob of butter on the top of some nice green beans that have been steamed properly. Yum. I'll eat that. I'll eat that. Isn't it funny? We've all got different little little things that we don't like. What have we got? Lima beans. Yeah, I don't even know if I've had those. A marshland vegetable from antiquity is <laughs> celery. Good. Yep. I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> Whatever it is, wherever it comes from, it needs to go back to where it came from. Just yuck. So anyway, that's my rant against celery today. Celery and tuna. I'm not, I'm not a cat person, which is kind of lucky. I'm a dog person because, you know, if I had to feed a cat, very often I yeah probably wouldn't cope get rid of the cat <laughs> just so I don't have to feed it tuna cats love it absolutely love it I'll eat salmon salmon's totally fine just can't come at tuna all right I think I've nearly dug out all these pieces there can't be too many left oops gosh Yeah, so we've got to, <laughs> got to go and do some yard work after this today. Got to take down the Christmas lights that are all down our side fence and up in the front trees and all over the back patio. Got to take those down, give them a clean up and pack them away. Got to do a little bit of hedge trimming. Ah, oh, Vanessa Worcestershire sauce, that's the one. <laughs> Tony can't do oysters. <laughs> I understand. It's an acquired taste, Tony. It was like olives as a kid. Olives and asparagus. I just wasn't keen. Um, because Dad used to Dad used to eat asparagus out of a can, and there it's, it's all mushy, and he used to mash it in on toast and bread and stuff. And I was like, nah, that's just not right. But Proper asparagus, fresh asparagus, if you steam that up or you grill it, 
Mm-mm-mm. You know, you go the whole hog and wrap it in some prosciutto and put it under the griller. I will marry you for that. So delicious. Give me a little piece. I kind of find that I can pick some of this up with my fingers and then manipulate it with my tweezers to get it into the right spot to place it. And that kind of works as a bit of a tag team effort. <sighs> yeah, olives were a thing that I wasn't keen on as a kid. But I love them now. Got an olive tree out the back. It's in a pot. I've had it for a few years. It's done a couple of seasons of fruiting. But we're going to put it in the ground when we get to the new house. That's kind of been the plan all along for the olive tree and a little Maya lemon tree that we've got. And some raspberries. They're all going to go into the ground, into the garden at the new house. And then we might get a bit of a crop out of that would be good. So it's looking so good with all the multiple colours in it. It looks like a, you know, the oldie antique tile that you might have found in a, a mansion somewhere. I mean, you can get remakes of these kind of tiles now. Not nearly as intricate as this. Two weeks and they'll start tiling at the new house. That's pretty exciting. They're putting doors on and putting skirts and architraves and all that kind of stuff during the last week. So we haven't seen that yet, but because now that it's locked up, we can't really just go out there and have a look anytime we like. Well, we can. So it's not as fun when you can't open the door and walk through. <laughs> I mean, it's my house and I want to be able to do that, but I can't. Not allowed. We'll get there though. A couple of weeks and we'll get to move. And you know it's all going to crash into the time when I'm trying to post out the next lot of craft and inboxes. And it's going to come at the time when we're going to be holding the biggest craft and tea, the fundraising tutorial that we're going to do for the Cancer Council. It's all going to happen all in the same week. <laughs> I'm just going to hope that the way we schedule and project manage things like getting our NBN connection put on at the new house so that the internet works and you know, getting things moved over and unpacked in time. Fingers crossed. I've got a little bit of a process going on in the background here at the moment. There's, when I go back to my my face camera it'll uh show you the schmozzle that is the background of the studio at the moment there are boxes and things going everywhere and i'm trying to kind of put things in a way that is like things that i know i'm probably not going to need to use or things that probably aren't going to sell um i still need to have them accessible on the off chance that you know Somebody goes, oh, all of a sudden I need like 400 sheets of cardstock in 25 different colours. Um, I'll need to be able to get to it and get them out, but I need to be able to start making some room and start packing. Yeah, Tony, busy is an understatement. I mean, I'm good at being busy. I'm pretty bad at being bored. But, um, yeah, I think... I think it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Now, somewhere in here, guys, yell out if you can find the other ones of these. There's one. Oh, there they are both together. Ta-da. Probably got, oh, I've got you off camera, so you won't actually be able to see them for me anyway. Silly Billy. There we go. Yeah, so it is going to be all go. So we've got, got a, um, a notebook going at the moment with myself and Ben, my partner. And we are planning out, we've got double pages for week by week, you know, list of things that we need to make sure we get packed and things that, you know, we've kind of started from the back and worked forward. 
um, to kind of go, here's things that we can do after we've moved in. Here's things that we need to do the week that we're moving. Here's things that we need to do the week that we actually have handover of the house, but we've got a few things that we need to get done, like getting the NBN on and um, getting the fencing put in and getting a path put around the house, the concreting and things like that. So there's some jobs that need to be done sort of before we get in, if you like. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a bit of a list going on for those things. Um, and then we've got, what else have we got in our lists? We have just things that we need to pack. We've got a list of things that, um, you know, we need to take with us to the other house while we're working over there. So, you know, we'll have got a blow-up mattress just in case we decide that we're too tired one night to come back. <laughs> um, we've got to take an esky because there won't be a fridge over there straight away. Um, you know, we've got the thermos for tea and coffee. There'll be power on. Um, yeah, so just trying to get all those little little things listed so that it's like we won't forget. Um, there'll still be things that we've not thought about um, that will bite us in the backside on the day. But at least if we've got a bunch of other things organised, there'll be less things biting us on the butt. <laughs> God, these little pieces. It's so frustrating. Five. I've got three to go. Where are you? Where are you? Maybe I'll start putting these pieces in and then see how we go. Um, actually, oh yeah. No, I want those to be black. Put those back. <laughs> They're going to be my black bits. I'm going to do these little shield-looking corners. Shield? I don't know if they're a shield shape. Toilet paper. Yes, Tony. Vanessa, sorry. Yes. Toilet paper. Good call. Yeah, all those little bits and pieces that you always forget. Mm. Get all of those bits of things going. We've got to order rubbish bins from our council so that they can get dropped off and we can be able to throw out rubbish. We're already, you know, culling things as we're packing at the moment. Um, Ben's going through. <laughs> he's a bit of a, a comic fanatic. So he's got years and years and years worth of comics saved up and they were in boxes. And at the moment, he's going through those boxes and putting the comics into um, sleeves, plastic sleeves, and they've got to have a, a piece of cardboard behind them and all this kind of stuff. So he's got hundreds of them. So that's his job in front of the TV every night is to go through um, all of his comics. He's got a few of them that have – he's got some really old Archie ones – um, which are pretty cool. I've been having a bit of a flick through those. And he's actually given me some that he, that they've kind of been damaged beyond keeping, um, as in front covers are torn off and, you know, things like that. And what actually he's given them to me so that we can use them in a project in a few months' time when I do a bit of a blokey, um, oops, um, yeah, there's a bit of a blokey theme coming up. One more of those. Where are you? Um, so that's kind of... That's going to be fun. So, you know, getting some stuff for free. <laughs> Things popping up on my screens everywhere. The hearts of celery. Oh, Margaret, you're talking my language. Margaret on Facebook has written asparagus wrapped with bacon and phyllo pastry and then baked. Oh, yeah. Which box do you put the extras we ordered? Um, Margaret, the, it'll come in the next box, um, depending on if it's something that I've got in stock. Um, so if, uh, what Margaret's talking about is if you order some things from, uh, the store that will fit in your next Crafternoon box, you can actually type in the code next box at the checkout. And if all, if that's all you're ordering, it won't charge you shipping. Um, and it'll come in the next crafternoon box that we can ship out so margaret i think your 
I don't want to say for sure, but I think there's some extras coming in your current box that will arrive in the next couple of days. Yeah. Which one in camera? Whew. So we're getting there, guys. We're nearly there. And then we'll be able to put the rest of the card together. <laughs> How long we've been going for? Oh, yeah. That's a pretty good time for all this little fiddly stuff. <sighs> yep, that's all right. I just thought I'd put this in the wrong section. It'd be awful. Put glue in the wrong bit and then have to wipe it all out. At least it's not much glue. Not much at all. I might have to update the uh, the cover page that I put on this uh, tutorial because I really like the way this one's turning out with all the little bits and pieces in it. Different colours everywhere. I'm loving it. So mum's not on the streams today. Mum's off having a catch up with one of my aunties. And I hadn't even told her which project we're doing, but I know when she watches this back, she'll be like, oh, thank God I didn't do that one. <laughs> she'll be very happy. Um, so I think I might do these little corner arrow bits in white. She'll be like, of all the tutorials I can miss, this is the one I wanted to miss. <laughs> Come in you. Two. <laughs> Six to go. There's just so many little bits. Hmm. Doing it with a bigger die would have been easier, but where's the fun in that? I did kind of hope that these dies were a little bit larger, but they weren't. Um, but I've got some on order. So if you didn't get a kit um, or a Craftanoon box and you want to do this little project, you'll be able to buy them from the online store probably sometime next week. I'll, I'll put an update on Facebook when they come in. That's not one. Okay, little bits. Just cut on oh, yeah, that one. Kind of like doing those little diamond paintings. I've done those too. They're quite uh, quite mindful. Four, six, two to find. Mum and I did one of those on the. Ah, there's the other one there. On a cruise ship, we were doing these beautiful big peacocks. Um. We had lots of people stopping and <laughs> chatting to us about what we were doing. And that was when they first, like, they weren't even a thing. People were like, where do you get it from? I almost wanted to print up business cards and hand them out to people. <laughs> but this is where we got these from. And I think at that time it was it was just something off. I think it was wish.com, um, which we don't like to order too much off there these days because they have taken to ripping off all the designers stamps and dies and all that sort of stuff and they're making them super cheap and nasty um and it's just not i don't know it's just not nice take someone else's hard work and then capitalize on that so i haven't bought anything from wish for a long time which makes me feel a bit better about myself uh, but the peacocks were beautiful and i often find some of the things you know everyone's bought that thing from wish that you know you thought it was you thought it looked like this and then when you got it it didn't look anything like that um, so you know there's always that risk of not getting what you ordered or ordering, ordering a lounge room rug and then finding out that it's a lounge room rug for a doll's house um, so it's you know like this big <laughs> it's probably not going to fit your lounge room well it'll fit in your lounge room it just won't cover much it's more like a 
coaster. <laughs> Ooh, there goes my tummy because I haven't had lunch today. Had a late breakfast, had a bit of a sleep in today. All right, now we have all these little fun little tiny bits in here. A bit easier to get your hands on though. And because there's so many of them. Has anyone ever ordered something from the internet and completely gotten something really, really wrong? I'd love to hear about it. Hi, Marie. Thank you for checking in. It'll be lunchtime over there in WA. Yeah, Margaret, it is a little bit easier if you do sort out all the bits when you do the die cut. Um, I could have, if I'd had more little containers, I could have put all these little bits, separated them all into the right shapes and started there. That would have been a good idea. We get kind of methodical and process driven with the craft, especially if you're doing multiples of the same card. Off the wrong little thing. Alrighty. It's probably enough for me to start gluing. Four at a time because that's about as much as as quickly as I can work when it comes to wet glue. I mean, the other thing you could do, I mean, if like I don't mind the black being not filled in, um, as in being you know, a backing card, but if it really worried you and you really wanted everything to be smooth on the top for some reason, you can definitely cut, you know, the sections that I've left in black here and you can piece those in as well. Whatever makes you happy. I just know that I did not want to be doing all of those little sesame seeds again <laughs> so soon after doing the last lot. Get out glue. Yeah, Tony, some of the big name companies are always getting their designs ripped off. On things like Wish and Alibaba. It's pretty sad. The artists do a lot of work to make sure that things fit certain sizes or work with other products. Um, often you'll get an inferior product. You know, your stamp won't cling to the acrylic blocks or your you know, stamp platforms or, you know, all kinds of things. Or they're not the same size, so you know they're supposed to fit inside a two inch circle or something, and then they don't fit, so then you can't use it the way you thought you were going to be able to. It's a bit disappointing. Sometimes it's just worth spending a little bit of extra money to get the real deal. What have I done here? Upside down, Miss Jane. There's a Mr. Squiggle reference from the 80s. <laughs> Tick tack. There we go. One more I need to dig out to fit into this card. Once everybody got on for their weekend, did they have a good have a good Saturday and most of Sunday? What are you gonna what's for dinner tonight? I'd love a Sunday roast, but you know, after I've done a heap of yard work, I don't think I'm gonna want to cook a roast. Plus, <laughs> I don't want to have to clean the oven afterwards. We're gonna cut down on the amount of cooking <laughs> that we're doing in the oven um, for the next couple of weeks. I think there's going to be lots of stir fries and uh, <laughs> things like that that we can cook on the stove top. And uh, 
then we can maybe get in and clean the oven and just not use it for the rest of the time that we're here. But we do need to clean it again. Oops, well, that's one way of getting it out. And they're all hiding under that star shaped thing. Come here, you. Must nearly have them all. We need 12, guys. How many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, we need 16. There's my maths going good again. <laughs> uh, you've all come to know that I'm not, not the best at maths. Where's the last one? Oh, no. Ah, there it is. Oh, uh oh. God, I thought that had just flipped way off into the distance, <laughs> but it was there. All right, guys, we're on the home stretch. Let's get this done. So, yeah, if you hadn't seen yesterday's tutorial and you haven't seen our Facebook page, we've got a little fundraiser coming up in May, uh, which is to raise some money for the Cancer Council in their kind of daffodil day. It's not Daffodil Day, but you obviously know that the Cancer Council logo is a daffodil. Um, and they normally have a thing called the biggest morning tea. So we're going to do the biggest crafternoon tea. And there's a little um, pack that you can purchase. It's available on our website now. And you can get it right through until last orders on the 12th of May, just so that I can get them packaged up and delivered to everybody. Um, I'm giving two weeks for it to be delivered. If I get your order earlier, I will get it out. So for people, particularly like you, Margaret, in Canada, if you want to craft along with us and make some paper daffodils, um, chuck an order in and I'll get it across to you. Um, but the cost of the kits, it's 25 Australian dollars and at least $10 of that is going to go to the craft, uh, the, <laughs> the craft afternoon council, the cancer council. Gosh. It's definitely Sunday and I've definitely done two tutorials this weekend because my brain is fried. Um, but yeah, the more the merrier. Um, there's going to be some bits and pieces included in your kit. Um, so you'll get to choose from a tea bag or a coffee bag or a hot chocolate sachet. Um, there'll be a little tasty snack in there for you as well. Um, I'm going to encourage everybody to do some baking and share your you know biscuits or muffins or cupcakes or you know basically do it at your house um but we'll share some photos on facebook there'll be some games and some prizes for everybody to win um and i think for that one we're, we're probably going to try and run it on zoom just so that we can um see what people are doing um there's a not not that we can see what you're doing like you can turn your camera off but there will be parts of the games where we're going to need to see um see what you're doing um and uh yeah we'll we'll kind of have a bit of fun doing it um surprises games um yeah i mean look if you wanted to organize a few friends to come over and you know do a bit of crafting with you at your dining table um you know and everyone could just bring a little bit of a little bit of something something for uh, afternoon tea be a nice way to spend an afternoon and raise a little bit of money. I think most people in the world now have probably had someone that they know who's been touched by cancer in some way. So it's just a nice little way to raise a bit of cash, have a bit of fun. Um, it is going to be one of those days where I do a double <laughs> double tutorial day. So there'll be one in the more one in the afternoon um, at two o'clock for our normal craft noon. And then we'll get on to making the beautiful crepe paper daffodils that are on the marketing material. So if you haven't seen it, have a look on the um, Paper Crafting Australia site. Uh, so Margaret, the glue that I'm using, um, it's this is just white PVA glue um, that I've popped into a little 
um, narrow nibbed um, bottle. Um, normally the, the glue that I use is this one, it's just the Couture Creations Turbo Glue Pen. Um, again, it's just a white liquid glue, PVA, nothing too fancy. Um. <laughs> Margaret, just going back to Margaret's comment about the <laughs> things you might have bought on the internet. Uh, tights that fit a child and you've chosen extra large. <laughs> oh, that would be horrible. Just when you think you're going to get some nice tights in the mail and then, yeah, you get teeny tiny ones. All right, let's get this finished and put it all together, gang. So I'm going to get my guillotine back out and I'm going to cut down my cardstock. Do I want the boards running this way, sideways, or top and bottom ways? Ooh. Oh, this is such a decision. I think I'm going to go with it that way. So we're going to cut this piece down to three and seven eighths, which is about there. Oops, a daisy slipped. Three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Gosh, I love that paper. That timber is just beautiful. The only thing that frustrates me with this paper at the moment, and it's it's fine on camera, but when I go to take a photo of it later, it's quite glossy. Like it's not intentionally glossy, it's not smooth glossy, but it has a bit of a sheen to it um, and it really affects my photos. <laughs> so that's all. Paper Rose, I'm just annoyed about that. All right, so I'm going to pop this down in pop some glue on the back and glue that to that section. I'm not going to glue this directly to my card just yet because I do want to add some of the paper raffia ribbon um, around the card just to add a little bit of something extra. Right. That's that bit done. And because they're even, it doesn't matter which way up I go. I'll try it, make it central, but I am eyeballing it, so I'm off camera. Excellent, good. All right. So the big question is, does this happen in black? Does this happen in craft? And I think the craft just disappears. I think I've made. Or do we happen in white? No, I'm going to go. Well, we're going to put a. Before I choose that, let's choose a sentiment. Oops. Might go with life is about happy moments for this one. Chopping down. Life is about happy moments, isn't it? I mean, that's what we aim for. Happy. Happy moments. I just want to kind of pop that where it's going to go because this is then going to go down the side. Yeah, I think that'll finish it off. Pop one down that side and one down this side. This should be good. All right, so I'm just going to grab my double sided tape. Didn't really need to go that hard, but what the heck? Measure out a length of that where it can, a little bit longer than the card background, just so that I can fold it over. Get the second one there. Gosh, I've been so clean on my desk today, guys. What's going on? <laughs> all those little bits all nicely packed away in uh, in that little tray. I think I'm getting organised or something, hey? Oh, backing papers, my nemesis. 
Yeah, Superman has kryptonite. I just have backing paper. <laughs> that's my that's my bugbear. All right, so I'm just going to hold that roughly in place. So I'm going to need to try and straighten this out somewhat. I'll hold that in place and then just fold that over and then stick it to the tape on the back and then do, oh, you know what, I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm going to run a little bit of glue along here because it's going to need, it's not like twine where it will hold taut, it's going to want to wiggle around and ruin my grand plans. Pop that down. Be able to wiggle that into position in just a sec. Fold that over the back there. Stay where you're told, paper raffia. Let's put a bit of pressure on that for a sec just so that it can adhere to the glue and to the backing paper. I like that the raffia is not 100% perfect though. Um, so I'm okay with it not being exactly where it's meant to go and I'll just do the same on the opposite side fold that down whack a bit of glue underneath it Look, you can never have too much adhesive I mean you can have too much adhesive let's be fair but you know, having glue everywhere isn't going to hurt things That in the right place and fold it over. Give this a bit of a push down and I'm just giving it a bit of pressure to hold it up against this little panel that we've put on here. God I like this one so much more than the one I did earlier today but the earlier one is still good. I like it. All right so I know I put all this extra double-sided tape on here but I'm just going to come in with, uh, does go good with the wood grain tangy. Pop this in here. Bit of glue. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And so the liquid glue should just give me a little bit of wiggle room with putting this evenly. Gosh, it's so much more nerve-wracking trying to do something like this straight <laughs> when you're doing it on camera. Beautiful. Now this one I'm just going to pop up on a little bit of foam tape. You know I like to have that little extra bit of dimension. And my foam tape is nearly out, almost but not quite. Oh, guys, I'm so glad this is only just, we've just hit the hour mark and a little bit. That was a bit I went a bit short on that bit of foam tape. <laughs> Oops. Cut a second piece, should be right. Yeah, I'm glad I got those little pieces prepped before because you didn't want to be sitting here watching me die cut all those extra pieces of cardstock. That's good thinking and pre-planning, Tangie. Well done. Pat myself on the back for that. I try not to make them longer than an hour because it does get a little bit boring, I would think, on your end. There we go. Life is about happy moments. I'm going to try and put it somewhat centred. Do you know what? It kind of looks like a front door. I'm a bit chuffed with that one. There we go. So the one I did earlier, a little bit plainer, just the, the single colour. Um, and this one we've got the um, two-tone. Now I'm going to grab, where did I put it? This block. I'm going to grab an acrylic block and this beautiful, beautiful stamp. Whoops, my block's a little bit grotty. I realised like we've got these gorgeous stamps, but I don't I don't do a lot with stamping. Alright. 
Hier. Cool. That is prepped and ready. Right, I'm going to block this because it's on an angle where I want to put it. I'm going to put it in this little section here. So I kind of want to be able to turn it so that it's not 100% straight to the edge. So I've just used the Gina K um, Obsidian Amalgam Ink. My poor little envelopes, they get left out all the time. So I'm try and line that up relatively straight. Give it a bit of a push. Ta-da! I'm really happy with this, guys. Um, so there's my two cards for the day. And my little envelope with a lovely little stamp on the back. Um, it's too big a stamp to really put on the front, but you could do something in a corner or something along those lines. Um, I do like, I mean, this isn't a perfect impression, but I kind of like that it's a little bit scratchy. Um, and in fact, I probably would really love to do a bit of a lighter um, inking of that. So do a second generation stamp off. So I'll stamp it on a piece of blank paper and then put it on there. Um, so it's a little bit lighter and maybe a little bit more textured. Uh, but I think that's come up really nicely. So let me get back to you. Thank you very much for joining me for a, a, an hour long session. And I know that it's possibly going to take you a lot longer than an hour to get all of those little pieces put into place. Uh, my suggestion is try it with one um, in that little strip down the middle first, see how paper piecing kind of goes together. Um, but I think the effect is really well worth it once you've uh, you've gotten through. Um, so if there's, you know, photos of your your um your pieces once you've finished, pop them up on our Facebook page and share that with everybody because um, I'd like to see how everyone interprets uh, how we've gone with the, the paper piecing today. Feel free to do it with colours other than the ones that we've done in the April Crafternoon box because I know there might be you know other patterns and other colours of things that you might want to use even with some leftovers from previous kits. If you're watching the replay and you've made it all the way to the end, um, please leave a comment um, or throw a little uh, emoji in there um, and we'll see who kind of joins in later on. Um, if you're after the Crafternoon tea kit that is available at our website papercraftingaustralia.com but thank you so much for joining me once again and i will see you all next week for another tutorial on saturday at two o'clock catch you later bye